as we've been exploring clean to sort of deeper and deeper levels, we've realized there's at least four ways people understand reason and make change in the world that, that are very universal and fundamental to how we are as humans. So the first one is uh, somatic or the body, which is what we've just done. And that's one of the most basic facts. We have a body. So we have ways of knowing what's happening inside and outside that body and ways of affecting change. So actually we move our bodies, for example, and our bodies learn memories, like stimulus response. And, and this kind of system at this fundamental level has actually been in our DNA for like over a billion years, like back to the first few multicellular orga organisms were using this kind of knowing and learning. Um, the memories that kind of your body might learn, and there is more than just that at a body level in humans, um, they're usually actually resourceful memories, but they can also be incorrect models of the world. That's where we get things around um, you know, trauma or other responses going on. Working with the body is not not a new thing. David Grove uh, certainly works cleanly with the body. We've got um, a process called feeling to metaphor. That's David, one of David Grove's processes. And what you'll be finding is working with the body is becoming more widely considered important in coaching and therapy. Um, We've been looking at it, obviously I do embodied and bodywork stuff um, quite a lot in my practice. So we've, over about the last three years, been developing a complete clean approach to working with the body, which is embodied clean. That's about accessing the body's wisdom, resources and capacity for change. And this, as I say, we've got the taste of the sessions. There was a session at Metaforum, I think, last year. Um, so that's the body. So I had to taste that. We did space before. So that's another fundamental way of understanding the world so we've got the ability to know where things are in space and it's important where's the food where is the safe cave how far away is the saber-toothed tiger you know this is fun <laughs> fundamental to our survival again for millions of years it's wired into our brains at quite a basic level we've got specific brain neurons that fire in response to spatial information uh, and it also turns out when things are arranged in space often somehow our system can know and reason differently because it's this kind of no way of knowing that's being brought to bear on it um, and we can take advantage of that capability sort of in these kind of coaching or clean explorations um, david grove talks about making space your co-facilitator and we've got processes um, for working in space so things like clean space is a particular process for working in space with clean but it's a more general topic about how you notice spatial relationships when you're working with clean. So another important way, and we've, we've noticed the effect space can have. Um, third thing is I'm working up to the hierarchy of evolution here a little bit. So one, once we can kind of, we've got bodies, we can move around, we've got a sense of space. The next thing evolution goes, well, hang on, how do we make sense of a more complex world? How do we, and these things like intelligence start to come in. And, Evolution and brains seem to be really good at reusing what's already there. So the prevailing view, I believe, is that humans understand the complexities of the world using metaphor. So this is understanding something in terms of something else. And that can be a sort of bridge between the conscious and unconscious mind as well. So that enables us to know more, to reason and to change things that we couldn't otherwise consciously access. So this is like the core part of clean working with metaphors. And it's thanks to David and particularly Penny and James, who did all the modelling, that we have things like symbolic modelling, which is um, particularly how to work with metaphor. Although, of course, there is some embodiment and space going on in symbolic modelling. So the final, final one of the four, again, another fundamental thing is we're, we're social creatures. We need to understand the desires and motivations of others. We have to build internal models of other people of their behaviors, their state, their beliefs. So we can influence and interact and survive. You know, we can understand um, our families, our tribe, the wider community. And so again, this is a sort of somehow built in system of making some sense of the world and reasoning with it and understanding and making decisions and making change, but in a different way to metaphor and in a different way to space. Each of these have their own unique way of um, helping us to survive. So it's another fundamental way of reasoning and making change in the world. Um, and again, there seems to be one where the, the brain's good at reusing what's there because it's not 
now we can kind of understand other people, that system gets turned inside, we can treat it as if there were different parts of ourselves with different opinions. So maybe part of us wants to go to the gym and part of us would like to lay in bed this morning. And so it, it's kind of symbolic because it's uh, a bit of a metaphor as if, but it's turning the social system on to kind of reason in social ways about the relationships between those um, graphical parts. Um, but uh, in clean, when well, this our clean approach, we call them personas. Um, so David was ahead of the game as usual. He did inner child work, which is working with a kind of in, internal as if there were uh, another part or kind of entity inside you with different opinions or memories or whatever. And parts work, I mean, it's been around quite a bit, but it's getting, seems to be particularly popular at, at the moment with processes like internal family systems, or IFS as it's called. Um, so in clean, we've also got a complete approach to working with parts, which is persona modeling, which Wendy and I developed about eight years ago. We've done a few metaphorum sessions as well. So what we're kind of saying is that there's, there's these four S's, clean actually taps into all of them, some of that in, in more newer ways. Uh, and as a facilitator, the more you work with each of these domains, the more you can help a client make a change. So the more you know all four, the more you can find the approach that best suits your client. Do they like space more or working with the body more or metaphors work well with them? Um, which again is going to help you make the change with them. And what's important to realize, these are fundamental ways we understand and making change in the world. So we're not talking about here's another tool or another process. We're talking about a deepening understanding of who we are as humans and then expanding the possibility for every client to make a change. And doing all of that through clean. So now, as we've um, been developing sort of some I mean, embodiment and, and some parts where it was always in clean, like say David was playing with it, but as we sort of fleshed it out and made it trainable and added in you know, other ways of working with it, we've kind of been, Wendy and I have been thinking about well, how do you bring it all together? So how do you flex with the clients? How do you blend the approaches? When do you go with the approach that's the client's strength? Um, when something's not their strength, how do you develop skills in that kind of approach when it's difficult for them, but might be important for resolving their issue or getting their outcome? If any of you have tried some clean, gone, I've got a client and it's really difficult for them to get into metaphor, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about, because maybe don't start there. Maybe work with their body or in space or with personas. And that's the kind of flexibility as a facilitator um, that we're we're hoping to encourage. So uh, actually, I've, I haven't put up our little diagram. So there you go. That's what I've been talking about, just to give you a little visual. Um, so the idea is we've got these four, um, four S, well, this is our 5S model. So we bring these together to make change so you can work symbolically, spatially, somatically, or socially. It's really handy. They all begin with S. I found. Um, and anyone that's, and as you can see, there's particular approaches in clean, but they're in a way, they're just ways you can focus your attention a while while you're learning. In the end, you end up with this completely integrated way of working with a client. Although there are some different processes in the mix if you want to use them. Um, anyone who's paying attention and has got a logical mind would have said, but Paul, you've only said four S's so far. Okay, I now see it on the diagram. Now you show me some space. There's only four S's. And you're saying it's a 5S model. Where could it be? So this is the hidden fifth S. And it's the sweet spot in the middle. And it's psychoactivity. So, and this is our little joke, by the way. Um, and it's the sweet spot like when you hit a tennis ball with the middle of the racket. And the ball, it goes further, it goes faster. It's got it in just the right spot. The psych activities when the client's inner world takes on a life of its own. Um, it seems more real to the person, their physical surroundings, uh, their body's typically involved, things start evolving, changes seem to happen of their own accord. Everyday objects appear different, maybe even become part of the, the metaphor landscapes. And the client from that quite often gets a multi-sensory anchor. So what this means is things like resources or desired states are easier to retrieve. They're more memorable. Things like outcomes become more motivating. 
the client's much more engaged with everything. And so change is more possible. It tends to happen organically on its own, on its own. And what we've discovered as, as we've kind of got more into this, these different ways of working, you can bring them all together. The more a client's working with more of the S's, it doesn't have to be all of them, but the more they're in the mix, the more it seems to happen, the more chance the client has a psychoactive experience. So there's specific ways you can encourage and maintain it by the way you work with a client. And equally, you can reduce it, remove psychoactivity by the way you work and suck the life out of everything that's important. That can happen with one question or a higher level as well. So it's, it's a really interesting um, phenomena. Uh, so what we're aiming again with this model and things that are behind this picture is really helping clean facilitators to really gracefully shift between these, between the somatic, symbolic, spatial and social based on the client. So maybe if you notice someone's, you ask a few clean questions and someone's mentioning their body and that seems very relevant, maybe you you start to orient more of the attention into the somatic. And if they're describing spatial relationships and that, that seems to be very relevant, you might orient your questions more into the spatial world. And typically what we're saying with 5S is you, you're starting to work out how to notice that. Um, what's the client's experience in all of these domains? Where does the client tend to go with their attention, which ones work really well for them and typically go with their strengths initially. Um, but then sometimes there's uh, an area that the client's going to need and they're not very good at. I think particularly the body is quite common, people are not noticing their bodies. Um, so we've been defining developmental models for how you develop the skills in each domain as well, which then turns out that you need different ways of doing clean. So we typically talk about like the squeaky clean coach but what we also need is like guides who are cleanish, who take people through a process. And we need clean educators who have to impart information. And that sounds un unclean because you're introducing things, but it's possible to do that in a clean way. So we're, and I've talked a lot because this is kind of in a way integrating a large amount of things, but we're really excited about the possibilities of this really integrated approach for, for clean. And we want to get it out more widely. 